You've got to tune to the afternoon show. It is listener-powered KEXP. Kevin Cole here with you. Just heard music from Prince, the song Sexy MF. Right before that, Shredders, uh, Dare As I Fly, Shredders, uh, members of the Doomtree Collective, POS, Sims, uh, Laserbeak, and Paper Tiger. And Kendrick Lamar starting off the set. King Kunta, the track from To Pimp a Butterfly. I've got tickets to give away for Kendrick Lamar coming up later on in the show. But joining me right now... Uh, fellow uh, Doom Tree Collective member, Dessa and band, welcome to KEXP. Thank you. It is great having you here. You're uh, starting your run of West Coast uh, dates. Yeah, this, this is officially the second at which our West Coast run begins. Yes, yeah. and uh, playing tonight at the Neptune. I want to uh, tell listeners that uh, if you're listening, you can also be watching this. We are doing live video streaming on our YouTube channel and also on Facebook. So I love the new album, Chime. Thanks. Let's talk about it in a sec, but how about a couple songs first? Let's do it. Cool. I've been Wendy, living with the Lost Boys. You spent as a decade on the convoy, moved every night. Where something got confused If it was from or two that we were running I've seen Gibraltar I've seen the Taj Mahal So where do I have Sophia? Chef shot from paints and walls blue I've played to full rooms I've played the full two Burning through the bottoms of a pair of new boots Cut my hair, take my chest down A woman on her own must be from out of town Funny, you don't know the concessions that you're making Until you catalog them And by then the men And your battle hardened Makes it with the asphalt Keepsakes and parking tickets on the dashboard I'm here to file my report as the vixen of the wolf pack Tell patient zero he can have his rib back Wanna know what class I'm in? Count my You can count my You can't be too broke to break As a woman always something left to take So you shouldn't try to stay too late Or talk to strangers Look too long, go too far out of range Cause angels can't watch everybody all the time Stay close, hems low, safe inside That formula works if you can live it but it works by putting half the world off limits. You wanna know what class I'm in? You can count my rooms. Cause we don't say go out and be brave. Now we say, be careful, stay safe In any given instance, that don't hurt But it sinks in like stilettos and soft earth Like the big wind is not a day without an incident I beg to differ with it I think a woman's worth I think that she deserves a better line of work Than simply staying vigilant Don't give me vigilance by definition, you can't make a difference If the big ambition is simply standing sentry to your innocence That's not a way to live, that can't be what a woman is That gives her nothing to aspire to What that is, what that is It's just a life of running fire drills We're 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 running fire drills
don't believe my will's quite free I'm half machine, at least half steam Aquinas, call on me How many angels on the head of your pin? Anybody in stilettos can answer that old thing It's one for the right, but one for the left Half an angel per pin at best Add wings, add heart, add harp, all set We lean to turn in the velodrome All lines are curved in the velodrome We pitch and roll as flesh and bones of the planet It's ours alone We lean to turn in the velodrome All lines are curved in the velodrome We pitch and roll as flesh and bones of the planet It's ours alone Gossip, slander, harvest, hunger, rain dance, hand to God, I didn't think it was contagious. Eve leaving Eden in a makeshift dress with a bell to tell us when we're hungry. There's a bell that tells us when we're tired. There's a bell that tells us to rise and fight. A bell to rise and die. It's just all bells sometimes. I ring myself to see if I might chime. To turn in the velodrome, all lines are curved in the velodrome. We pitch and roll with flesh and bones on the guitar. It's ours alone. We lean to turn in the velodrome, all lines are curved in the velodrome. We pitch and roll with flesh and bones on the guitar. It's ours alone. We spend our days and nights deciding where to go and how to ride there. And in the end, again, we all vote yes, we all turn left. We lean to turn in the velodrome. We lean to turn in the velodrome. Tessa live on the afternoon show, KEXP. Kevin Cole with you here this afternoon. And uh, two songs from the new album, Chime, Velodrome, and uh, right before that, Fire Drills. And uh, got to get right into this, uh, and it sort of ties into uh, that last song that in part questions the notion of free will. Um, this is really fascinating to me. So you had your brain scanned uh, before you worked on Chime. And mm -hmm. um, in part, uh, you know, it had it scanned, and then uh, you did neurofeedback sessions in part to help you get over a lingering relationship that you had a hard time releasing. I did. Yeah. So first of all, talk a little bit about the process and uh, and what it is, uh, why you wanted to pursue that. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been a science nerd, you know, since I was mm -hmm. a little kid. So I've always been interested, I think, in investigating the world through research. And, and after having uh, several years in a row of tribulation and trial and romance, um, I just found that I wasn't getting over it at the rate that other people seem to be, you know, like all the, the normal recourses didn't seem effective, time, whiskey, distance, etc. Yeah. And um, so I ended up contacting a researcher from the University of Minnesota to let me into our fMRI machine, and we were able to map the coordinates of love in my brain. Yeah, had you heard about that? I had, I had been like, drinking Chardonnay and watching a TED Talk, Yeah. and I'd seen this researcher named Dr. Helen Fisher talk about her work trying to map exactly like the locus, the location of, of love in the brain. And that project in and of itself surprised me because I was, I was sort of stunned that you could do that. Yeah, and yeah. It was part of what she was talking about also the ramifications or mm -hmm. what, what uh, you might be able to do with that kind of information? As I understood it, you know, she was excited to have found like this neuroanatomical, um, the structures within your yeah. head. The, the zone. It, yeah, exactly. The anterior cingulate and the... Um, the ventral tegmental area, you know, I know just enough to kind of parrot the terms, yeah. but, um, but I was excited to learn about it cause I thought, dude, if I know where it is, maybe I can get it out. Yeah. Yeah. So then worked with this woman named uh, Penny Jean Grace Fire and she and I went to my dad's house because he had a flat screen TV. My dad is here today. <laughs> you, you needed a flat screen <laughs> TV to do this. Okay. Yeah. So. And, and you got to watch, you, got, you could see the images of your, uh, the mapping of your brain and what was firing up or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that in real time. So it's like, I'm wearing kind of 22 electrodes affixed to my scalp that are measuring the electricity through my bone and hair and skin. Okay. And you can see your brain working in real time. And then you can try to say, okay, well, let's look at these regions that are associated with love to see if those are, for example, hyperactive. And if they are, uh, then you can try to 
trigger a, in our case like a sound a feedback tone so we had like a little run of of kind of vibraphone noises little chimes that would trigger every time my brain operated in a healthy way I normally don't ask an album question, uh, that, you know, album title question, but you just mentioned it. Is that why the album's called Chan? It, w- it wasn't. I don't think it is, but I'm, I trust myself less yeah. and less. Okay. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> as part of this process, was it, uh, man, I'd be so nervous that uh, yeah. I'd be like, what if they F up part of the brain that makes me smart? Yeah, totally. Uh, you know? I do know. Or, uh, but it sounds like it was more of a process, like re, re, uh, being aware of the triggers in your brain, perhaps, and uh, potential solutions to kind of rewire or get mm-hmm. around those. Yeah, I mean, I think if some if a physician had come in with like a, a syringe full yes. of Botox and said, "I can deliver this exactly to the loving center of your brain," I would not have said yes. But this felt more like going to the gym, you know, to like strengthen your brain the way that you would strengthen a muscle to be flexible and resilient. So. Um, usually I'm, I'm pretty gun shy for anything that I think might, yeah, yeah. like risk my intelligence or, or clear thinking, you know? And, um, this felt more like meditation than it did like a lobotomy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Did you, did you notice a difference or, I mean, is it, mm. is it sort of like meditation where, where, uh, once it becomes a tool or an exercise for mm. you, you can then, uh, you know, call upon it. Like, did you bring oh, those tones with you? I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I can, <laughs> like, was I backstage listening to this creepy vibraphone <laughs> stuff? Um, this particular setup would mean actually having to get hooked up to those 22 to electrodes again. Mm-hmm. Um, so this brings up a ton of, mil- a ton of questions, right? Mm. Especially as an artist. So, yeah. y- you know, in some ways you could say that that longing, that pain is really a beautiful thing. And the process of writing songs is possibly, I'm sure, is a way for you to, to address issues in your life. Yeah. Hopefully find resolution. I don't know if that is part of how it works for you as an artist. Right. I mean, I think that if, if, if I had heard, a, if I had seen that same TED Talk when I was 25, um, and I essentially thought that I had a button that could make the pain stop. I don't think I would have pressed it because I was still writing really great songs. And that's part of life. Pain is part of life. Yeah. Um, but when it became perseverant, you know, yeah. it's like I'd written that song. And now I was trying to find a new metaphor to write the same song again. Like, I didn't want to only write Torch songs, irrespective of, like, my well-being as a person. I didn't think that was good for me as an artist either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's really fascinating to me. I just, I, I love that idea. And I love you know, exploring that and, and potentially, you know, our futures having that kind of, um, tool at our, uh, you know, to just understand more about how you think so you can kind of make better decisions and, and, and work through stuff. But what about the free will part of it? Okay. I mean, you know, I feel like anybody who's, who's like wanted to fit into a pair of jeans has, in some ways, um, second guessed the efficacy of their own will. Like, so when you go to the grocery store and you don't buy the chips and the cookies because you know that if you have them at home, you will eat them all in one night. Like that's you making, um, a bet against your Mm -hmm. free will, right? You're essentially saying, well, my environment determines my behavior because I won't be able to resist these. Um, and I think, I think the more I learn about the mind and body, the more I think they're connected. And I think the, the more of it is determined by environment, yeah. Yeah. We just don't feel it at work, you know? Like, for the song we just played, uh, v- Velodrome, I, w- I was talking to my dad and mentioning that, like, I would, Im- I would venture that when birds migrate south, they have that conversation. Like, what are you going to do this one? Are you going to stay? No, I'm going to go. Like, it doesn't feel like instinct to us when we behave instinctually. Yeah. And I would imagine that other organisms also don't have, um, th- their, their systems don't alert their conscious minds to that fact that genes are taken over. Yeah, it doesn't with my dog, for sure. How do you know? Well, the second I bring out any kind of sweet thing, even if it's like two rooms away, you know, and I know Charlie Girl's senses are fine-tuned, especially the sense of smell. Boom, she's there. That's, today, I was, I was trying to, um, I'm wearing a blue shirt, and I was looking for it in my, like, stuffed bag of clothing, and I accidentally hit a pile of gummy bears in, at the bottom of the bag in a cellophane wrapper. And right away, Jonathan, our drummer, who was driving, went, ooh, 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 what's that? Because he heard the slightest tinkle of cellophane. Yeah. The <laughs> Just like Charlie Girl. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> for things that are really pleasurable. 
or things that are really painful as well. Um, let's change the, sub the subject to uh, seed art. <laughs> so um, yesterday, I think, the video for Five Out of Six dropped. And uh, the lyric video, right? Yep. And you uh, called upon uh, fans to submit uh, original art to be used. And there were some pretty cool things. You know, embroidery, some frosting that looked really cool. Uh -huh. uh, tell me about that. Yeah. And, well, and kind of how you did it and, and yeah. how you felt about it. So, you know, every, every once in a while um, on like Instagram or on Twitter or through another social platform, um, someone's nice enough to post like a painting or a drawing or a sculpture that might have been inspired by a lyric. And I thought, man, some of these are so fresh. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way that we could combine them into like a moving gallery for a, for a lyric video. So I put a call out a few weeks ago now, maybe a couple months saying, hey, if you're good at quilting or embroidering or writing and frosting or flower arranging or whatever, um, and you feel like putting together an image for a lyric of five out of six, we're going to try to animate them all together in a lyric video. And we got like a couple hundred submissions and we're blown away. So yeah, one of them that was jaw dropping for sure was the seed art submission. Yeah. It was like the state fair, but with bad words. <clears throat> totally. I, a lot of folks probably don't know what seed art is. It's it's like a folk art Is that form. true? People don't know what seed art is. Is that because I'm just from Minnesota that I, I know? Well, I kind of think so. I mean, it, it is sort of big in Minnesota and I think it's had a bit of a renaissance, but I actually bought a couple of seed art pieces from huh. Lillian Colton who won the Blue Ribbon at the Minnesota State Fair for like 30 years in a row. And then she quit doing it because nobody else would win. Yeah. And then her yeah. daughter won. And then she started doing it again because she was like a grandma at that point and uh, it was just revered, right? Because she would do these incredible things. I bought a seed art Kirby pocket. Yeah, cool. And, was, and a seed art Jesus. <laughs> That's amazing. How and big? The seed art Jesus is a good uh, 24 by 30 at least. Doesn't inches. that sound like a Father John Misty album name? Oh. Yeah, Seed he, art Jesus. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I was so fascinated by her that I went to her studio in Owatonna, Minnesota, and she had walls and walls of mason jars with different colored, like you've never seen as many shades of brown ever of different seeds, you know. So she had them kind of like a, just a palette of just various shades of, you know, brown, uh, gray, <laughs> so, you know, some red, there's some purple seeds, but yet, you know, anyway, it was really fascinating and really amazing. And if anybody's listening and is interested, look up, just look up Dessa five out of six seed art. You might find it. It's pretty fresh. Yeah, it is cool. And I was, yeah. I was impressed by that. Uh, so you got a book coming out in uh, September, my own devices, true stories from the road, uh, on music science and senseless love, not seedless love. <laughs> and, uh, you know, an account of your life on the road as a working musician mm -hmm. and more. Any poems? Yeah, you know, for this one, it's, um, I got, my first interest in lit was essentially creative nonfiction, which is a genre that I think is awesome, and but has like a marketing problem because creative nonfiction sounds like a, a textbook or something. But it's, it's essentially like the same stories that you tell at a bar with your friends, but committed to paper and told, you know, with a with a novelist's care to like attention and yeah. and and description. Um, and so for me, this is sort of like a, a memoir in essays. This is the form that I first fell in love with with, with literature. So this one's entirely essays. Yeah. Um, is the Geico story a part of the book? It is. Yeah. C oh. This is like awesome uh, and very entertaining and funny too, in a way. I think. Uh, so do you want, do you want to tell it? Yeah. Um, so I get a lot of stomach aches and so I read the Geico quarterly mailer cover to cover when I, when that, I, that gives you stomach aches. <laughs> Is it cause I'm lying on the <laughs> ground with nothing to do except read mail. And, um, and it's a surprisingly like engaging read. And in it, I read about these unusual insurance policies and, um, people who have like taken out an insurance policy against the existence of the Loch Ness monster and against the non-existence of the lo you know, Loch Ness monster. And one of them was, uh, this insurance policy for Ben Turpin, who was a film star in the silent era. Mm -hmm. And he had insured his crossed eyes cause that was his wow. shtick. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that was his thing. If he the, woke up one day and they weren't crossed, he, he'd be out of work. He gets 25 K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He took it a 25 K policy and, uh, you know, he had had like, he'd customized his car so that like the headlights were crossed oh, on the car. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was, it was his brand. It's his shtick. And I was like, I wonder what my shtick is. And I was thinking language, but then I thought, you know, all these songs I'm writing are essentially kind of heartache songs. 
I would have a hard time learning how to write music if all of a sudden I had a really sunny, romantic life. And so... Um, if you were happy. Me, I prefer to say sunny, romantic life because that takes the edges off. But thank you, Kevin. Um, so I, I wrote Geico to ask if they would insure heartache for $40,000 a year. And um, they passed. But then I went on to Lloyd's of London to see if they would provide coverage. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How'd they do? I do not as of yet have a policy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that pain that creates beautiful work, right? Um, you don't want to lose that. I know. I just I feel like I've got enough. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you totally. <laughs> I've got enough. It's Des Alive on the Afternoon Show, playing at the Neptune Theater tonight at the Wonder Ballroom in Portland tomorrow. Uh, the new album is Chime. How about a couple more songs? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Thank you. They say that your heart is the size of your fist I can tell you firsthand, I know how that glove fits Takes your whole life just to teach it to trick It beats and it attacks And in between is all of love and lies attraction You live your life between contractions And you and I would do just that But what if I could cure I'm not some method actress trying to see my my descent. You're gonna have to play the tape backwards. Say that breath require practice. Got no time for my detractors. Standing on my staircase, all you are is a fire hazard. Put my time in now. I'm vetted, uncontested. See how an honest answer shuts down, mother. 
asking trick questions. I'm out here arms wide hiding nothing. I've done it all in broad daylight. I left the cameras running. I'm the phoenix and the ash. Red eyes shining in the camouflage. My secret is I don't keep none. See something, go ahead and say something. I ain't afraid of it. I don't drown, won't stay down. He finds a way to rise somehow. Skin of problems, I'm coming down. Agenda. I just tell the truth, let it off the leash, don't touch it, it knows what to do. I'm running a tight ship, every deckhand here has a five-year plan and an ice pick. They can write code, they can drive stick, I got an octave on you and a high kick. Don't blink, I don't block, I'm a bleeder, all I do is hit. I don't want them all, but I'd say I take five out of six. Clock's running, better glove up if you insist. Okay, let's see who's really counting who and who's been counterfeit. I'm the phoenix and the ash. Red eyes shining in the camouflage My secret is I don't keep mine See something, go ahead and say something I ain't afraid of it I don't doubt, won't stay down He finds a way to ride somehow He's in the crowd as I'm coming out And I don't see too many rivals Cut my own gills with a pocket knife Turning my fingers in the sockets My daily dose of, my daily dose my daily dose of lightning Just buzzed enough to get me climbing up the kite string My back is aching, my bell's too tight I brought a chisel tip to this pencil fight No luck, just fortified dice I'm going morning and night And I'm really rising, I'm really rising The fire on the horizon I'm the phoenix and the ash Red eyes shining in the camera flash My secret is I don't keep mine See something, go ahead and say something I ain't afraid of it won't stay down He finds a way to rise somehow Skin the crowd as I'm coming out And I don't see too many rivals now Phoenix and the ash Red eyes shining in the camouflage My secret is I don't keep her and see something Go ahead and say something I ain't afraid of it I don't drown Won't stay down He finds a way to rise somehow and the crowd is on, coming out and I don't see too many rivals now. Such a wicked beat at the end of that song. Thanks. Yeah, and thanks, thanks to Matthew, Psalm, Jonathan, and Cara for playing with us yes. today, too. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. To your Daily Dessa, uh, live and in person today. Uh, Dessa playing tonight at the Neptune Theater, tomorrow night at the Wonder Ballroom. Uh, two songs from the new album, Chime, first new album of uh, material since uh, Parts of Speech in 2013. And uh, five out of six was the song, half of you right before that. Five out of six, man, such a powerful song. Thanks. It's like, uh, that's the kind of song that when I hear it just sticks with me and that I want to be like the soundtrack to my life. <laughs> like seriously, like I, I envision like getting up in the morning, hearing that and I'm in slow motion going to my car, you know, just like feeling that and feeling p pumped for the day. Thanks. Hey, and, and can I also just say thank you so much to you, Kevin, and thank you to KXP for championing this record. Absolutely. Uh, you you are so welcome. Thank you for making a great record. We, it's, uh, we, that's why we exist, to champion awesome artists and music. So thank you. Thanks. So it's Dessa Live here on the Afternoon Show, KEXP. Um, big time thanks to Scott, Justin, Alia, and Kendall on the video. Thanks to all you watching on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Allie taking photographs, Kevin Suggs on sound, Matt O running the board, Kelsey helping out, uh, Jen, Melissa, David, Serene, and a uh, huge thanks to all the donors that make in studios like Dessa this afternoon uh, possible. We could not uh, do it without you. It is the afternoon show, KEXP. Thank you. Thanks, KXP. Discover new music at kexp.org.